everybody, this is Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker. Where we are believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. The Bible says that he is Baal Perazam, who is the Lord of the breakthrough. So breakthrough is our portion. And today we're going to talk about breakthrough in reform and reformation. You know, this is such a hot topic, such something that many people have talked about, but who better to discuss this episode on Reformation with than the one and only Mr. Johnny Enlo. Mr. Johnny, thank you so much for being on our show today. Hey, Ben, good to connect with you again. It's a privilege to be with you, and I, and I love the topic, obviously. Amen. Well, you are known as a Reformation man, and over the years, me, myself, our minister, we've loved receiving, gleaning such revelatory teachings from you and just on the prophetic and, I mean, talk to us. How important do you think it is uh, to be in line with the prophetic in terms of reform and reformation? Well, the prophetic is is very important, both at the macro and the micro. And let me explain that. You know, it says of the sons of Issachar, they were those who had understanding in the times what Israel ought to do. And so there is understanding the meta narrative of what's taking place. That's the prophetic meta narrative, the macro, the big picture. For instance, right now, the people that are messing up the meta narrative are heading us into dark times and end of end of day scenarios. And, and so if you, if you get that part wrong, then you'll prepare the wrong package of who you are to be. I mean, there's a part of it that stays consistent. Yes, love, uh, love the Lord, love your neighbors yourself. That part can, can stay there. But you want to have the meta narrative correct. We're entering into the era of the kingdom. It's going to be showtime on earth we're, we're walking through a contradiction but we're headed into uh really a, a most amazing time and so we want to get that part correct and then in a very practical way of reformation you know reformation is about bringing god's solutions his better way of doing things it's his presence and his solutions into the seven mountains into the practical spheres of society media education government economy arts entertainment you all know them Oh, I didn't say all seven there. But so how else can we do that if it's not through a word from God, through communication from God? Even when you look at, you know, the biblical reformers, such as Joseph and Daniel, these type of these type of voices, uh, it really was people who had a prophetic capability to receive dreams, interpret dreams, hear the voice of the Lord, bring on the voice of the Lord, whether it's Joseph who was, you know, it said everything that he did, the Lord caused to prosper. Why was that? Even if he wasn't trained in it, he prospered because he got a word from the Lord and he moved forward with that. And so the, you know, it's just, it's just indispensable for us to have an understanding uh, that we must know his voice. And yes, it's always, it's rarely, rarely audible. And so we're learning how to, uh, you know, open up our receivers, put the antenna on high and perceive his voice but there's really we really have nothing if it's not his communication that's that's who he is in the beginning was the word and so that's who jesus was and so as he is so are we in this world we're to carry who he is his communication and that's really the most practical way we become salt and light yeah absolutely and you know it, it reminds me of, of in the days of samuel the bible says that there was a rarity of God's word, you know, there's a rarity, and uh, to me, it seems like there's actually a plethora of of so much information. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the word of the Lord, and so there's a rarity of, in a sense, the genuine thing. But of course, we know that God wants to mass produce, like I said, the micro into the macro. And as we're talking about Reformation, uh, I love what you said earlier about the Kingdom era. Um, of course, I've preached this many times. I know you have, many other voices have, but it's almost like we're leaving a church era and becoming the church. But now, instead of being church A, as in just a temple, we're actually being the ecclesia church or the kingdom, which means that no longer are we just in a priestly office or a prophetic office. But now it's time for the kings and queens to rise on this earth. Go ahead, John. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm sure you know, and probably many of your listeners, the word ecclesia, where that's the Greek word we get our word church from, when Jesus said, you know, there are gates of hell, but I will build my ecclesia, my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. 
He was using a word that had never, ever been used in a religious or spiritual context before. The word, he didn't say, I will build my temple. He didn't say, I will build my synagogue. He yeah. said, I will build my ecclesia, which for us now, yeah, that means the church. But for them, it was not a religious word. It was a very uh, uh, civic-minded word. It was the ecclesia, those who gathered in in key areas of society to discuss the challenges, the opportunities in, in their area, in their cities, in their towns, and wherever they were. And, and this council, it was a council that gathered, again, we'll say outside what we would call church buildings, but they received the mind of God for very practical things. You know, this was, what do we do, whether it's about the crime, the, uh, the lack of educational opportunities, what our unemployment rate, what do we do about this in our, in, in our uh, you know, circle of life where we are at? What do we do about that? And he's like, that's who stops the gates of hell. It's not, it, you know, it doesn't take away. It's great to have church buildings where we have awesome worship, but it's really the showing up Monday through Saturday, we'll say, depending on your schedule, Monday through Friday. The nine to five world being affected is what we're talking about when we talk about Reformation. Uh, this is incredible. Uh, absolutely. I mean, of course, we need church buildings to gather, etc. God is a God of land and properties. Uh, but not just that. Of course, we need to be influencing like salt and light, like the leaven of the word of God sprinkled all across the earth. Um, you know, right now we're talking about breakthrough and reformation. And we look on the news or the fake news or all the farsity that's going on. And it almost seems like there's a reform but not in a godly sense. I mean, people are talking about social justice reform. People are talking about economic reform, tax reform, gender equality reform. But there's so much that's contrary to what real reformation is, according to the word of God. So how do we actually be reformers in this era, in this season, while it seems like there's so much deconstruction of the faith or deconstruction of the family unit, there's so much of this false deconstructing going on. How do we be proper reformers uh, with the Lord? Well, it's it's true, Ben. There is such uh, an overload of, of of the fake, the counterfeit, and that's what the enemy's good at, you know. And he counterfeits, counterfeits, and counterfeits. And so we have counterfeit reformation, counterfeit reset going on. They're both going at the same time. The, the dark side, the deep state has a reset plan. God has a reset thing going on. And, and so we have, uh, we have the woke, we have the fake woke, we have the, uh, all, all these things. And it's it, back to the original points where we must be able to hear from the Lord, the voice of the Lord, you know, just in a very practical way. Hundred dollar bills are the most counterfeited bill on the planet. I have found that out. There's many nations you go, they won't even take your hundred dollar bill. Why? Because there's too many counterfeits. And, and we see that part of the attempt of the enemy is to so overload us with counterfeit that we don't even go, uh, we, we don't even recognize or go for the real. We throw out everything. And we have to be so different than that. It's interesting. I did a study, you may know about this as well, as to how you become a counterfeit bill, counterfeit money expert. And it's not by studying counter bills. There's a lot of people, you know, even Christians want to go and like, no, this looks like new age, what you're doing. This looks like they try to eliminate the prophetic speaking in tongues, miracles, because they find something in, in the counterfeit that's similar. Well, that's just total backward. It's, it'd be the equivalent of saying we can no longer have real hundred dollar bills because there are fake. But the experts, true experts on counterfeit bills are those who study the real so intensely that the moment they see a fake bill, they, that's counterfeit. They know it because they be, have become expert studiers of the real. And so we want to be uh, not moved by just, you know, what's the latest wind and what's what are people talking about? We really have to have time with the Lord. Again, the prophetic flows out of intimacy. It's communication from him. So there's no shortcut to that. You don't find out what he wants reformed by checking with society. You can ask the Lord based on what you hear from them. You can say, this is what I'm hearing out there. What do you say? But he becomes the compass point. He becomes the point of reference for everything to do 
uh, with Reformation. Wow, incredible. Um, today, in this episode, we're going to go there because uh, you've boldly preached, uh, you've stood on. Uh, of course, Trump is God's chaos candidate. Of course, that's Dr. Lance Walnow's terms in a sense. But, you know, myself, we've all, we, you know, we're, we're in line believing that Trump was actually a Cyrus and a great reformer. And that his era is not over yet. And God is far from being done from using his family to bring reformation, not just to the United States, but even to Israel and the nations about. I mean, we see that Trump has been nominated for so many Nobel Peace Prizes because what other president has brought peace in the Middle East, has brought peace to so many nations that were at it for, for many uh, generations, for centuries. But, you know, we believe that, you know, I believe that Trump is a reformer, but now it seems like, again, there's a, there's a counterfeit or even a backlash or something taking place. But we know, we believe that God is not done with a spirit of reformation and he's not even done with uh, the Trump family and presidency. No, I don't, not at all. You know, uh, President Donald Trump will have uh, his, his second term and <clears throat> there's going to be, you know, it, it, it's, it's because we've listened too much to the fake narrative that we would, we would doubt that and that we put certain dates out there. You know, just, uh, just think about this. What if Prophet Samuel had been the one that had said, President Trump will serve a second term? And we would say, yeah, then that, I would believe that for sure, because it's Prophet Samuel, and the Lord would not allow any word to drop from, you know, it says every word out of his mouth. The Lord picked it up, and so, but here's the reality. Samuel went, he did two things. He went to Saul, and he says, this day the Lord has removed you from being king, but he was there, I think, over 10 years. And then he went to David, and he said, the Lord has anointed you instead of Saul. So number one, there was an initial delay, and then we want to understand that David ultimately didn't, um, he didn't get in until Samuel, the prophet that prophesied him in, was gone, dead and gone. The, the prophet never got to see the fulfillment of, of his word. And we're not saying that for this situation with Trump, but I want to just be aware of this, because this is the part that we miss. <clears throat> Even when Saul died, David didn't just follow, as the prophet said. There was, there was a time of two kings. There was a time, you know, uh, Prophet Kim Clement had prophesied, and they will say there are two presidents. And you see that there's one. President Trump is the president that has been ordained, nominated by the Lord, prophesied, prophesied all the way from Kim Clement's days. And over a thousand prophets still hang on to around the world, prophetic voices, whether known or not known, that he's, that he's in. And then the voting, anybody who's seen the act, why it's hidden, why you can't see the normal public, cannot see the information, why you cannot be exposed to the, uh, to the actual uh, voting feedback, and it gets blocked even by the Supreme Court, is because it'll show you that he won over 70% of the vote, and 49 of the 50 states. So he won. He is, he is sanctioned in heaven, on earth, and he's here, but we have somebody else. So in back to David's day, he didn't just... Saul died, and then David's in. It didn't happen that way. The David will be the type of what President Trump is, is called to be, we'll say, even in his, in his second term. But it says that Abner, who was captain of Saul's host, he brought in Saul's son, Ishbosheth. And his name means man of shame. And Ishbosheth became the king for two years. Wow. He was the king right there. And so it looked like the prophet Samuel was wow. wrong. David was only accepted as king by Judah. Guess who's the only ones in the body of Christ accepting President Trump as king right now? The tribe of Judah. If you can go in the spirit, if you can see what's in heaven, who's sitting in the throne, go up and look at the presidency seat in heaven, see who's there. It ain't Biden. It's Trump. And on earth as it is in heaven. And so actually for seven and a half years, only Judah recognized David, despite the prophecy, despite Samuel, the prophet who's never wrong, saying, you're next. Well, he wasn't exactly next. So the people say, yeah, if these prophets were right, then he would already be in there. Well, the biblical pattern is all over the place. That there's fake, false uh, authority. Adonijah was another one when Solomon was supposed to be in a fake inauguration, then they had a real inauguration. This is nothing unusual for there to be 
false pretenders even allowed for a time and season. Adonijah was allowed like one day, Ishbosheth for a couple of years, and then kind of Abner took over for a, a little bit. But it finally came time, it says, and they all came to David together. If you read First Chronicles 11, 1, it says, and all Israel came together and said, hey, even when Saul was king, you were the one who led us. Even when you weren't king, you were king. And so this is a reality, but there's an application. If you read First Chronicles 11 and then 12, it begins talking about David's mighty men and how they came to him. And they came to him some when he was in Ziklag, but some in this first seven and a half years when even Israel's not accepting him, even when there's this fake president going on at the same time, they turned into mighty men. They all used to be Saul's cowards. cowards. Remember when, when, when Goliath was there, not one person challenged him. For 40 days, they all shook and shook until David came and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that we should fight the armies of the living God? And when he took him out easily with a little stone, it awakened the people. And if you read, uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing read, First Chronicles 11 and then 12. It begins talking about, there's this guy, Joshua Beam. He raised his, his spear one time, and he said he raised it one time. He killed 300 Philistines. They're shish kebobbed on his spear one time. And there's another that did 700. And then there's Abishai who killed 300 and said, but he's not with the top guys because he had to do a whole battle to kill 300 by himself. He couldn't just do it one run, ah, do that. And then there's Beniah, and it says he saw a, a, a lion in a snowy pit. He jumped down in it, killed it with his bare hands. And he walks up to a giant. He walks up. He only has a staff. He takes the spear from the giant, and he kills him. And then he goes on and on, and it tells about these, these men that arose. The point I'm making right here, there's 11 of the tribe of Gad. It says they had faces like lions and they ran like gazelles and they controlled all the territory on the east and the west of the Jordan River. Eleven guys took care of it. And they said, how do we know they ran like gazelles? I think one of them saw what like two miles away. He saw some imposter, somebody who's not supposed to be. He's like, let me go take care of this. Poof, he goes off there and he takes care of them. And so, but it, it ends up being thousands of thousands in First Chronicles 12, 12. 1222, it says this, these came to David and they were like the army of God. You never before hear this term, like the army of God. You never hear afterwards until Joel chapter two, the army of God. What happened? How did Saul's cowards become like the army of God? Where now any one of them could have killed Goliath easily. He now had thousands that could easily kill Goliath. You read it. There were thousands. It talks about how talented and skilled they were. It wasn't all of them, but of the tribe, you would say there's 300 from this tribe, 11,800 from this, and this, this massive crowd of thousands. They awakened, and this is where we're at right now. We're in a little in between. President Trump is not fully established on earth with everybody seeing it, it, it clearly. Uh, the tribe of Judah sees him. But, but is there no seven and a half years in Hebron where Israel is not yet accepting him? In that time period, these people awakened. They, they woke up to rise and shine with who God was in them. And they realized, you know what? We've got to get involved. There's a whole sheriff's movement going on right now, Ben, across America. It's right. Sheriffs are rising and they're, they're defending the rights of the people. Uh -huh. They are the protection saying we we respond to the Constitution. We don't have allegiance to anything else. And so they're being another level of defense of the Constitution. So we need these mighty men, mighty women as state legislators. We're finding out it's a little state legislators, the people counting the electoral votes, vote counter. The steal happened by people that weren't, you know, at the, at the top. And so reformers, we begin to show up. We look, we show up at state Supreme Court, justices, justice place, city councils. That's just speaking of government. Last weekend in, in, in uh, Las Vegas, there's a whole uh, a group of people that represent millions and millions and millions starting new social media. They realize you can't allow it to be censored the way you're being censored there. And so there's, and these are believers and they're coming together. We have Jim, Ka I'll be done. Jim Cavazil, you know, who played Jesus in the Passion of the Christ. He's coming out with uh, a movie, Sound of Freedom, I think, about the rescuing in the un underground
places, the, the, the sex trafficking victims and all that. So there's this awakening that's taking place because we realize we can't. Here's the deal. David still came back and David was still king over all of them for another 33 years. But it was like when they had a problem, they like, David, could you come? You're the giant killer. Killer. We can't go like Trump, President Trump, could you come? You're so brave and strong. No, it's like rise up. You be like those eleven sons, the sons of Gad, that the, you know of the tribe of Gad. Faces like lions. They had the faces like lions. They could run like gazelles. When the problems show up, they just went and dealt with it. So we need to arise. Speaking of reformers, this is what this event we're we're doing next month. You're a part of as well, Ben. Called rise. We're going to arise. And we're going to shine with who he is. And we're going to take advantage. We're going to see. Many are awakening because they're like, oh, what if President Trump doesn't come back? And I'm okay. Uh, the people that have doubted, it makes them actually say, we better rise ourselves. We better quit just sitting in church singing Kumbaya and saying, Jesus, save us. Let's arise. let's see who he is. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then we could be. it could be said of us right now. It could be said of us in the very near future, and they were like the army of God. They all took care of business on all the mountains. That's where we're going, Ben. Wow, powerful, powerful. That's what you call a mic drop moment, uh, Mr. Tony. I mean, so powerful. Um, we are going to be together at your event called the Rise Summit in Bend, Oregon. It's going to be an incredible virtual event as well. I mean, you have a plethora of speakers. I mean, just really real modern day reformers and uh i'm honored to be one of the speakers so thank you for your invitation uh bill johnson benny johnson danny sill cat kerr and kuneman uh i mean just plethora of people um but before we uh go into uh, talking more about the event just you know i want to ask you about prophetic reform because there's so much going on with social reform political reform church reform but what what are, what are just some quick thoughts on prophetic reform taking place right now? Well, that and that's right on. And let me just say, Ben, we're excited about having you there. You're truly a reformer. And hopefully put some links there, a hyperlink or somebody does there so that people can sign up through you. There's no more room there. I should say that it's sold out by, by yeah. a long shot. So it does have to be uh, true. But you're right. There is a controversy going on in the prophetic right now, you know. And, and and she'd back off. It'd be like Samuel saying, hey, you know, I'm sorry, I blew it. David's in, and you know, I thought he was next, but it was Ishbosheth. No, the word of the Lord stands. And especially when he spoke it as clearly, we have multiple prophets taken to heaven, visited by Jesus, visited by the Father. It's like this wasn't one of these, these weak, we're relying on one prophetic per person and everybody's championing him. This was heard by many people. And so what we got to do is be able to back back up enough. You know, sometimes we miss the picture because we don't know how to uh, you have to, you know, get the focus out. We have to be able to see the whole force. We're among the trees. Beginning in 2020, we understand that even in the Hebraic calendar, we were entering the year pay, which has to do we're a decade. Again, we don't have time to uh, uh, fully explain, but it's about the mouth. You know about that in the Hebraic calendar. The next decade is about the mouth. And sure enough, 2020, what happens? They're masking the mouth of uh, everyone, and especially the church. You know, all kinds of other places can open up, but not the church. And this is worldwide. So there is a mask attempt from the enemy against the church in general. And what's going on in 2021? He's like, if we can mask the prophetic, if mm. we can make the prophetic fall, uh, th that's why we got to recognize this is a unique moment as a prophetic and intercessory crowd. Because this is spiritual warfare addicts at its max. He's trying to set back the whole body of Christ for a generation or more by not kicking the legs out of the prophetic by saying, no, back off. You know, it didn't happen. Uh, and, and again, it didn't happen just because some date that they picked out as if God can't write men and men until you farsen on the wall and have a person removed. Like what is it? inauguration matters? Does it, you know, because somebody gets to cheat because they get away, if an, or, an arm bandit. Because he gets away for a little bit, we now consider and honor him as, well, that's your money now, because, I mean, you, you stole it fair and square. No, you don't get it as long as you got it that kind of way. It's just a matter of time when the thief is discovered, uncovered. So as the prophetic part of our reform, we cannot back off on what he has clearly spoken through the voice of many streams, through the voice of many waters, through the voice of many counselors, through the prophets. It's not relying on one. This is so... 
expanded uh, uh, the voice of the prophets even from multiple nations. And we cannot start reinventing a new, well, no, maybe it's in 2024. No, it is concurrent. Before this year is over, he is in, and he'll be not that far. It could be this weekend. You know, we're in Purim. Uh, we were just recently in Purim, and then we're going to the Passover. And this is a perfect time timetable that, that we're in. And so anytime, we don't get, you know, that's part of the prophetic reality is we don't get the dates is the hardest thing. They're, they're, it's based on events, not on dates. And so that's how it is in heaven. And right. sometimes it then, in hindsight, we go, oh, that was a key, a key date. But so it is, it, you know, we talk more on this, but lack of time, we'll just say, yeah, prophetic reformation is also on the table right now. My gosh, my gosh. Uh, I'm getting so stirred up hearing you uh, share, as always, uh, Johnny. And uh, I'm so excited to be with you at the Rise Summit. I'm sure we're having the information come up. It's already sold out to be in person. We believe in the power of gathering. It's always essential. It's everlasting. It's never going to be out of date. Um, but, uh, of course, it's sold out. So join the virtual event. Uh, the link is there. You need to join. This is going to be a game changer. Uh, Johnny, I want to ask you, uh, for this RISE Summit 2021, uh, I mean, what are you believing to accomplish with this summit? Uh, I believe there's going to be thousands, even millions, reach virtually and even through the anointing of impartation that's released. But what are you believing to accomplish with this RISE Summit this year? Yeah, you know, and the RISE stands for Reformers Influencing Society Every Day. And it's like these David Mighty Men that finally awakened up like, okay, we can't call David every time. We better rise up ourselves. And so we're believing that this is what's going to happen at a global level. And you're right. There's going to be thousands. We might already have thousands signed up um, um, for this. And we're launching an app for RISE, for the global community of RISE, because the idea is in this with this app, we're going to allow God's people to connect. We're going to give them basic information. We're not going to micromanage it. It's allowing God's people to connect by mountain, by sphere, you know, media, education, government, or, or, and by geography. And so they're going to be able to discover each other and know each other about the same thing, because since it's still a rare thing, they're still pioneers, those who think reformation, as opposed to escape, you know, they're still, no, it's the end and it's all done. Escape. That's why I said, if you miss the prophetic meta narrative you won't even know it's time to rise you'll think it's time to hide and whine instead of rise and shine but i said 60 confirms it's time to rise and shine so i'm i'm expecting this to be catalytic uh, an initial snowball you know we knew this is when it was going to happen who knew that this uh, with the events happening worldwide in, in our nation we are awakening part of the great awakening is the root awakening is like if we don't start showing up in every area of society with solutions and presence boy are we really 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 going to be in a mess but god has orchestrated this time and we believe this will be an initial snowball of something that's going to really release like god's army around the earth reformers my gosh that is powerful uh, I know you have uh, Bill and Benny Johnson. I mean, I love them. Everybody loves them. Who doesn't love the Johnson family? Uh, but they're going to be uh, uh, part of this Rise Summit. I'm just curious, Johnny. I don't know if you've had some personal secret intel conversation with them. I mean, what what wanted them, what led them to be a part of this conference besides their love for you and, you know, all of that? Well, I just say behind the scenes, we've been connecting uh, some more. And... Um, <clears throat> And, you know, it's been this season is, has been very uh, uh, tense, strenuous on a lot of things. And, and it's it's causing people to choose. Uh, you know, there's no there's no more uh, not making your choice. And you have to like, are you going to be a reformer? Are you going to contend for this? Are you going to believe for this? Where are you going to go? And it's sort of it's shifting people one way or the other. But we don't have to draw lines and create division because I believe it's going to be similar to the Gideon reality where, you know, the masses in the body of Christ thought Gideon was a nut. And so there's only 300 that believed in him. And they're the 300 prophets because they all had trumpets. They're all proclaiming. And so they're the proclaimers. And they're going to say the truth. And everybody else is like, <laughs> this is, there's no way. Uh, you can't take on the Midianites. They're the government over us for, you know, 18, 40 years, whatever it is. And we can't do this. We, this is crazy. And then all of a sudden it says Gideon and the 300 as they're, proclaiming what God's going to do, there's this massive reversal that takes place. And all of a sudden, next thing they know, they have 100,000 of the enemy dead. 
and the enemy is running. So what does it say? Then the tribes say, well, you know what? It looks like we can win now. We don't just have to wait till Jesus returns till later or, you know, we're headed towards the great tribulation. And so they started chasing and then everybody just celebrates and we hug each other. So I think we're headed to celebrating and hugging each other. But, you know, meanwhile, it's created some some unique uh, connections and friendships. And and, you know, uh, Bill has always had this hopeful and good perspective of God and, and that. That really is, is so key right now. And if you understand that's who he is, then you can't start embracing something that has you losing your nation, using the, losing the next generation, losing all kinds of other stuff. And Benny is amazing. Uh, and she's, a, you know, the happy intercessor. And she starts with a place of victory, not in a place of, oh, God. And so those things naturally connect us in a great way. Wow, incredible. Well, like, like I said, I can't wait to be there. It's going to be a snowball effect. I mean, you heard it from Johnny Enlow's own mouth. I mean, this is a rise season. Isaiah 60. This is time for us to shine. And God is bringing in these generals and these people who are real reformers of modern day society. So I'm so excited. Make sure you sign up for this virtual event. It's a game changer. You need to be a part of it. Mr. Johnny, uh, any last words before you just close us off in prayer and release an impartation for rise? Well, no, just uh, it's so good to connect with you again, Ben. I love uh, who you are in the spirit and that you're uh, you're a key voice for your generation, for our generation, too, but really for your generation and who you're reaching and the understanding you have and your willingness to stand. You've been, uh, you know, you haven't taken the easy route and the easy path. And, and that's what it requires. There's a little inner fortitude. And there is, you know, that little David thing is uh, where it rises up. Yeah, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And, and, and so, you know, before David ever beheaded him, he shut his mouth first. So there, there is a need to, not to be rude, but, you know, it's part of a recent prophetic word that I gave. Unbelief is not humility and faith is not pride. And so you have to think about that uh, for a moment. There's people that are championing unbelief. They're like, no, we just need to be humble and recognize it. No. God calls that an evil heart of unbelief. He says the children of Israel enter not to the promised land because of their evil heart of unbelief. And you can see that in the 10 spies, they help, you know, instigate this thing. And there's something, there's, a, there's an instigation going on in, in the body of Christ for those instigating this humility where you back off what God has promised you, back off what God has said he'll do. And Caleb's, no, they will be bread for us. We see them. We're not backing off. God's with us. And so you're one of those, and, and you're cross-generational in that, and so we're excited. All right, well, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're doing on all those who are listening right now, and I ask, Lord, that your presence and your glory would descend upon all of them right now. Lord, this is going to be, it's not going to be mental gymnastics, even what we're doing. We're not going, you know, uh, trying to outthink the enemy. We're going to bring presence. We're going to bring your glory. Your glory is going to carry great presence. Your presence is going to carry great glory, and it's going to come together in a package. And so let the glory and presence of this season be released right now. And Lord, I thank you for releasing even uh, prophets on the mountain of economy right now. And the sign that they get in the right arm as it goes numb, begins to tingle, gets cold, something supernatural in the right arm, prophets for the mountain of economy be released now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for prophets for media the new social media, and all kinds of ways you're communicating and the sign for them, even being right now, their feet go on fire, or they become numb, or their legs, they feel their legs and feet being anointed with an oil right there. Prophets for media, prophets for media, be released right now, supernatural signs. And Lord, we thank you for those called, again, to be showcased in government. Uh, prophets for government, they feel a hand on their head, Lord, right now, physically a hand on their head they feel it that's what you're feeling right now that's the lord saying you have a call to carry my prophetic voice into government don't just try to be the president but we need you at every level you know at the as state legislator at, at, at every stage city council everywhere you ask the lord where it is but he's confirming to you if you've got any one of those three supernatural signs and many of you are going to get it those are signs for you to know you're called to carry his prophetic voice to carry who he is, his presence, his solutions, his better ways of doing things. Re Reformation prophets 
to three specific areas of society. Thank you, Lord, for allowing that to happen right now. Let your blessing be upon everyone who is listening or watching right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. Amen and amen. People of God, I mean, are you experiencing the presence of the Lord? So rich right now. There's so much revelation. We know there's real reform when there's revelation. And uh, Johnny Enlow, thank you so much for being on our show today. The Breaker and talking about Breakthrough Reformation. And can't wait to be with you for the Rise Summit. Everybody watching now, sign up. You need to be part of this virtual event. It's going to be a game changer. I guarantee it. Thank you so much, Mr. Johnny, for being with us today. Amen, man. Blessings on you. Well, people of God, I hope you were blessed by that. This episode of Breakthrough on Reformation. I mean, wow, what a game changer. Make sure you comment. You want to hear what did God do with you? What did he speak to you? And not only that, but share, like, share, subscribe. We appreciate your support. And I pray that you will be a part of the Rise Summit with myself, Bill, Benny Johnson, Danny Soak, and Johnny Elizabeth and Lowe. God bless you. This is Pastor Ben with The Breaker. Until next time.